Hey, what's up guys? To be able to stretch certain parts of a text, like what you're seeing right here, uh, is actually pretty straightforward in DaVinci Resolve. So without further ado, why don't we uh, jump right in and have a quick look. To get started, we're just gonna go ahead and bring in our Fusion Composition clip. We don't need the full duration, so we're just going to cut it down to about two seconds, then we're going to take it to the Fusion page. Now here we're going to bring in our text node, and the first thing we're going to do is to write our text in the text box. And then once that is done, we're going to just bump up the size a little bit. Now to help us with the stretching, we're going to bring in a grid warp node, which you can find under warp. So what we're going to do is just to bring that in and drop it right after the text node. And now we're ready to get started. So in the grid warp node, we have source and destination up top that we can switch between. Source is particularly helpful if you want to really hone in on certain parts of the video. Uh, otherwise, we can just stay on the destination tab, which is what we're going to do for our effect here. Uh, and right underneath it, you have selected region and magnetic. Now, region and a magnetic work very similarly in the sense that they allow you to make a change and have an impact in nearby areas as well, as opposed to selected, which allows you to make a very precise adjustments based on exactly what you selected. So this is what we're going to use to help us make our stretchy text effect. Now let's go ahead and bump up our X grid size as well as Y grid size. This will give us more points, AKA more precise adjustments. We can also uh, overwrite this number to something uh, much bigger or much smaller depending on your need. Uh, but uh, now we are ready to uh, get started with uh, our animation. So uh, let's a keyframe, right click here for mesh animation uh, with our playhead at uh, zero frame. And then let's move it over uh, by 12 frames and then let's keyframe again. And at this point, what we want to do is to stretch out the middle part of the letter E. And to do that, what we're gonna do is to select everything to the right. And once all that is selected, what we want to do is to just move them over. Uh, and uh, one thing you can see is that when we start doing that, we can easily mess it up. So in order to make sure that doesn't happen, let's hold down the shift key while we're moving everything to the right. This, as you can see, is going to ensure that all the letters will stay uh, perfectly straight. Okay, now the next thing we want to do at this frame is that we want to squeeze the middle part of the letter H. So once again, let's select everything to the right. And then uh, once uh, the selection is done, we're going to just move the entire selection over to the left just a little bit there. Okay, all right. Now once that is done, let's move over, uh, move our playhead over another uh, 12 frames. And then uh, what we want to do is to just restore everything to its original setting. So let's go ahead and click the R letter up top. That will restore everything. And then let's move our playhead uh, over by another 12 frames and let's keyframe. And what we wanna do here is to stretch out the middle part of the letter T that's kind of in the middle. So let's once again, select everything to the right and then we're going to just move our selection over. And then uh, we're also going to try to stretch out the the top part of the letter T that's in the beginning. So let's only select the left part of it and then just move that selection over to the left. Now let's move our playhead over by another 12 frames and we're going to just restore everything. And uh, at this point, guys, this is pretty much it. Another thing we can do is to open up the spline editor and change the interpolations between keyframes. This is absolutely optional. However, if you want to make your animation more engaging, uh, this is definitely something you can do. Okay, so once that is done, let's just take it back to the edit page, let this render, and uh, this is it, you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial, and as always, I will see you next time.